This video tutorial is intended to describe and show an installer the steps required for installing an indoor video display. The installation overview is composed of three phases. The first phase can be completed prior to the actual display delivery. It involves mechanically fastening a pair of 10-foot unistrut rails to the wall using the wall anchor supplied in the install hardware kit at the install location. The video display requires power and communications cables to attach at the lower bottom right corner of the display. An Ethernet cable is required to connect the display to any of the display operator locations in the gym. The second phase is installing the display at the location. The display sections are designed to easily fit through standard single doorway openings in order to be conveniently moved to the install location. Also included in the install hardware kit will be Unistrut mounting brackets which attach to the Unistrut rail and secure each display section to the wall. Phase 3 is testing the display from the operator location. This means plugging in the cable, plugging in the two boxes which drive the display, and attaching the cables properly. Each operator location requires a source of power, connectivity to the in-house audio system, video displays, and the network. This operator position is usually located in the press box at mid-court up in the stands or at the scorer's table on the gym floor. Phase 1 is the installation of the Unistrut rail, power, and communications cables. The video display install hardware kit includes 3 8 inch Simpson strong tie anchors, two metal spacer guides, Unistrut hardware for the spacer guides, and a wall power junction box. The installer will need to locally source two 10 foot long, 1 and 5 8 inch Unistrut rail sections from a local electrical supply house. Additionally, the installer will need to provide conduit, wire, communications cable, clamps, and masonry fasteners for any conduit straps. The basic tools required for the install include a concrete hammer drill, a level, a 9 16 inch socket wrench, a tape measure, a roll of painter's tape, a marker, electrical conduit, Cat5 Ethernet communications cable, and 240 volt 20 amp electrical service to supply power to the display. The display install hardware kit includes wall fasteners, two metal spacer guides, four spring-loaded nuts and bolts for the spacer guides, and a wall power junction box. Use the painter's tape to mark the four corners of the display. Also mark the center of the top of the display. When installed, the video display panels will extend six inches above the top and bottom of the Unistrut rails. Begin by drilling the first fastener hole approximately six inches below the center of the top of the display. Locate and mark the center of both pieces of the Unistrut rail. Install the upper Unistrut rail by inserting a single fastener bolt through the rail and into the pre-drilled center hole in the wall. Use the 9 16 inch socket to tighten the fastener while holding the Unistrut rail level. Now move to one end of the Unistrut rail and using the level, mark and drill the outer hole location. Begin drilling the outer fastener hole using the hammer setting on the drill. Then finish by using the drill setting. Now move to the other end of the Unistrut rail and repeat the process. Verify the rail is level before completely tightening each fastener. Install two additional fasteners. Space the fasteners equally along each Unistrut rail. You will use a total of five fasteners to hang each Unistrut rail. Install one of the Unistrut 3 8 inch spring nuts near each end of the top Unistrut rail. Insert 3 8 inch bolts through the spacer guide and into the 3 8 inch spring nuts on each end of the Unistrut rail. You will use the two spacer guides to help keep the two Unistrut rails parallel. Insert a 3 8 inch spring nut near the end of the lower Unistrut rail. Lift one end of the lower Unistrut rail and insert a bolt and hand tighten. Raise the other end and insert the bolt and tighten. The two rails should now be parallel 
Use a level to ensure that the end of the unistrut rails are even vertically. Mark the end of the lower rail and install a fastener. Now drill and install a wall fastener on the other end of the lower unistrut rail. Install the remaining wall fasteners, copying the spacing of the fasteners on the top unistrut rail. Remove the spacer guides and guide hardware. Install the supplied power disconnect box 6 inches below the right hand side of the lower unistrut rail. This will allow the cabinets to hide the majority of the disconnect switch box. From this location, run the conduit back to the breaker panel. This unit requires a 240 volt 20 amp breaker with the appropriate size wire to meet all local and national codes. Install the Ethernet communications cable at this location and leave a few feet of cable for connecting to the display. Phase 2. Installation of the video display at the install location. Open the crate and locate the mounting brackets included in the video display hardware kit. These will be bolted to the unistrut rail. Follow the drawing in the hardware kit which shows the spacing required to match up the tabs on the back of each section with the mounting brackets. Install the brackets using the supplied 3 8 inch bolts and spring nuts as shown so that the sections can be hung as they are moved into the gym. The sections are labeled A, B, C, and D. The sections are composed of cabinets and each cabinet will need to be connected to the cabinet adjacent to it for both power and communications. Facing the wall, Install the right-hand section of the display, labeled D. First, move the display sections to the installation location. At the installation location, remove the lifting eyelets from the side of the display section and screw the eyelets into the top of the display section. Use a lifting strap to carefully lift the display sections into a vertical position without scratching or damaging each section. Lift the vertical display section D onto the unistrut rails. Slowly lower the display section onto the top and bottom unistrut rail. Ensure all of the display section tabs are completely attached to the unistrut rail. Connect the external power and ethernet cable to display section D by lightly prying off the bottom right LED tiles. Route the external ethernet cable into the display section D in the lower right corner of the cabinet and plug it into the open port on the display receiver card. Attach the Wago power connector provided in the install kit onto the wire coming from the external power source. Connect the external power to the internal power connector in the bottom right corner of section D. Unload section C from the shipping crate and transport to the install site. Remove the lifting eyelets from the side of the section and screw them into the top of this section. Rotate section C into a vertical position, protecting the cabinet from scratches or damage. Lift section C into position beside section D. Ensure all of the tabs attached to this section are resting on the brackets on the unistrut rail. Use the nuts and bolts in the install hardware kit to tightly snug each section to the next. You should see no gaps between each section and each panel should align on the top and bottom. Remove all of the tiles from the right hand side of section C and look for both communication and power cables in the adjacent panels. Pull the cables or wiring through the holes provided to connect them together. There will be a pair of connections to be made at each of the four cabinet levels. Install section B in the exact same manner as section C. Section A is composed of only two cabinets turned vertically, and you will need to complete the power and communications cable attachment vertically. The communications cable and power cables follow a daisy-chained serpentine course from the bottom to the top. Once the last of the wiring connections have been made, you may replace all of the tiles. Phase 3. Display Operator Position including the laptop, cables, hardware, and video display testing. Turn on the display and connect the Ethernet communications cable from the display into the MCTRL 300 video processor Ethernet port. There are two Ethernet output ports on the processor. Both ports send the same signal to the display, so the Ethernet cable can be plugged into either port. 
Now connect the power cable from the video processor, the SR31 scaler, and the laptop PC into a power strip. There are two video signals that need to be plugged in between these devices. One is a DVI to HDMI cable, and the other is an HDMI to HDMI cable. Attach the DVI video signal cable to the MCTRL300 video processor and the other end of this cable into the HDMI out port on the SR31 scaler box. Connect the HDMI to HDMI cable into the output port of the laptop and into the in port of the SR31 scaler box. Turn on the power switch for the video processor, the SR31 scaler box, and the laptop PC. Verify there is an image on the display, and the image is filling the display from corner to corner. There should be no tiles that are displaying black or portions of the display that are not working. Deliver the laptop video processor, scaler, and all of the power and video signal cables, along with the video camera, tripod, and audio mixer, to the facility representative. If the display is not operating at all, or if only a portion of the display is functioning correctly, follow these steps to troubleshoot the display, if there is no image on the video display at all. Verify that there is power to the display. The receiver cards inside the right corner of the video display will be illuminated if there is power coming into the video display. Ensure the Ethernet communications cable is installed into the primary receiver card in the lower right corner of the display. Ensure each cabinet is connected to the next via a communications cable and a power cable in a daisy chain bottom to top serpentine pattern. Ensure each tile is connected with a communications cable and a power cable. Verify each tile is connected to the motherboard inside of the cabinet. Seat the cables firmly. Verify the display operator location is powered and connected properly to the display. Ensure the HDMI and DVI video cables are connected to the correct ports on both the video processor, the SR31 scaler box, and the laptop PC. Ensure the Ethernet cable running from the display to the operator position is connected into either output port on the video processor. Ensure the laptop is turned on and that there is an image on the laptop display as well as the video display. For additional assistance, please call Technical Support at 800-411-3136.